meeting to order. Call the vote. 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 Here. Sorry. Gill Gillum. Here. Herod. Here. Finley. Here. Rutherford. Here. Seahorn. Here. Salter. Here. We have a quorum. Thank. Would you rise and join me for the invocation? Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you this evening with thankfulness for this day and for all that you've given us. Lord, we pray for this community and for this city commission. May the actions that are taken here tonight be pleasing unto you. As we go from here, we would pray that you would keep us in your care, keep us from harm, and we'll give you the praise and the glory. Amen. Thank you, Don. Attention, position, play. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Is, do any of the commissioners want to pull any items from the consent agenda? Seeing none would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Moved by Commissioner Herod. Was it second by Commissioner Gillum or both? Second by Commissioner Bolt. Any further discussion? Call the question. Motion carries 7 0. Item 2 Animal control. Do we have animal control here today? No, He's not here. Good. Moving right along. Item 3 Citizens' participation. I would remind you that uh, you can talk on any subject you want. You have three minutes. Uh, come to the podium, sign in, tell us who you are, and and speak your piece. Anyone on citizens' participation? Wake up, Holly. <laughs> well, I didn't find my if notes. If you need right. notes to speak, you're talking well, too, too long. <laughs> no, I didn't. That is true. So I'm going to do this. Uh, thank you very much. The upcoming. Um, Master Gardeners Gardening with the Experts is coming up on. I'm looking to look at James. Let's throw James under the bus. The Master <laughs> Gardening with the Masters is coming up. It will be out uh, publicized at Gordon Cooper Technology Center and um, partnering this year with the Blue Zones Project. Um, last year was our first year with the Seed Swap. And so we're inviting. Um, local folks to come out, bring their garden seeds, flowers, um, heirloom tomatoes, whatever that is, and to swap seeds. So that, oops, I didn't sign in either. Golly. We, 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 we put your name on there before we print I know. I, I think it's just, it's just a given. And we'll make you a stamp. <laughs> that would be fantastic, because the thing that I wanted to talk about, Kate Joyce is going to tell you all about. Okay. So I suppose that means that you're coming up, Kat. Yeah. It is now. Hi, I'm Kate Joyce, and I'm the cruise director at the Shawnee Senior Center. And I just wanted to remind everyone that our Blue Jeans Ball is coming up this weekend, and. We've got a room reserved at the Grand Casino. They are our, our presenting sponsor. And we have a mechanical bull that you can come and ride. The tickets are $30 per person and $50 for a couple. And Commissioner Herod, I wanna thank you and your wife for already having your tickets. And if anybody else needs any, just let me know. Been twisting my arm for a week. That's what I like to hear. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you, Kate. Anyone else? Hello, my name is Crystal Richardson. I am part of the Shawnee leadership, and this year we have actually decided to do a 5K benefit run. 
Uh, anyhow, so I guess what I'm trying to say is be on, the, be on the lookout for more information about it coming soon. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. We got one. We have one more. One more. One more. Okay, well, I had notes, but they're all wadded up, so I won't take very long. Okay, um, I'm here with my daughter in hopes that you would reconsider, reconsider the zoning on agricultural zone, zone A, for the commercial medical marijuana growing and processing. Um, I looked at a lot of the ordinances on the cities and I haven't found one yet that excluded the agricultural. I know that we can have buildings, we can have greenhouses, and we can have hoop houses. We can grow things and we're good at growing things. It's actually right up our alley. Um, we're zoned for for horticultural special specialty farms. Um, I know that I can have a building as long as it is okay, you know, coded right for the building and fire codes. I can have green uh, grow lights and grow tomatoes. But for some reason, we cannot grow medical marijuana out in zone A. I believe that we have a lot to offer the, the agricultural community, we have a lot of benefits and a lot of knowledge on growing things and high standards. So I hope that you will just consider it and uh, on that particular zone, and I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Jolene Leach. Oh, I'm sorry, what's her name? Jolene Leach. Anyone else? Thank you. Item four. Mayor Commissioners, I have tonight a proclamation in support of the United States Census Bureau, and I'd like to invite Ms. Tricia Woodward from the Census Bureau to join me. Our uh, proclamation states, whereas an accurate census count is vital to our community and residents' well-being by helping planners determine where to locate schools, daycare centers, roads and public transportation, hospital and other facilities, and is used to make decisions concerning growth and housing needs. Census data is needed to ensure fair congressional representation, and it creates jobs that stimulate economic growth and increase employment opportunities in our community. Now, therefore, I, Richard Finley, Mayor of the City of Shawnee, do hereby proclaim that the City of Shawnee is committed to partnering with the United States Census Bureau to help ensure a full and accurate count in 2020. Ms. Woodward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you may. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of the commissions. This is an exciting uh, chime for me with the Census Bureau because of the importance which is stated here in the proclamation. I'm very excited that Shawnee recognized the benefits that will be afforded to your community. Each person in this room is valued with federal dollars over the next 10 years at $1,675. So I did approximately 50 times that, 50 people, and it's about $83,750. Multiplied time 10, and that's 837,000. Over the 10 year period that Oklahoma and your area has an opportunity to receive from the federal funds because there's over $650 billion available to us. My reason for asking for the proclamation and getting your support is that you are trusted voices. The community elected you and they trust you. So getting you to encourage your residents to complete the census form will afford them the opportunity to be benefits by hospital roads as the proclamation uh, indicated. But we need you because you know where the difficult 
places, uh, what we call the hard to count places in your community. And it's safe. We do not share the information with any organizations. We just want the number of persons that will receive services from your city, from your community. And I always say, you give Amazon more information than the Census Bureau get. <laughs> and we don't sell it, OK? So I really, again, want to thank you. I want to encourage the residents and community leaders and stakeholders to participate in a complete count committee. And you'll get to see me again, because I am required to train you, to tell you about the resources that the Census Bureau has so that you can make sure that everyone gets counted once and only once in the right place. Thank you again. Thank you, Trish, and welcome to our community. Thank you. Thank you. Item five, consideration of approval of final plat for Belmont Park, addition two, phase two, addition phase two, located at the southwest quarter of section two, township 10 North Range 3 East case S1218, project 181084. Applicant Belmont Park Villas. There he is. Good evening. Uh, staff report for the Belmont Park. Um, this is an 8.79 uh, acre tract of land. It was previously uh, pre preliminary platted back in 2013 when they preliminary platted it. They had a, a two sections of tract of land. They had a commercial corner. This was on would be on the northeast corner of Acme and MacArthur. And when they preliminary platted the commercial, which they have now final platted and are building on, they also preliminary platted this uh, multi-family area alongside it, rezoned it and, and platted it at that time. So now what they're asking now for is the final plat. Um, they have supplied us with water and sewer documentation that would uh, have been approved by the city of Shawnee. And so therefore they can go ahead and in install these 19 lots. Thank you. Are there any questions of Jared? Are there any questions of Belmont's representative who is here? Okay, seeing none, uh, call. Is there a motion to approve? To approve, I move with, uh, the with the conditions set yes. forth. Right. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Bolt. Is there any further discussion? Call the question. Motion carries 7 0. Item 6, consider resolution supporting the consideration of an agreement between Shawnee Civic and Cultural Development Authority and Global Spectrum LLC DBA Spectra for Management Services of Shawnee Heart of Oklahoma Exposition. Mayor, Commissioners, uh, I rise tonight in support of your resolution, if approved, to encourage a negotiation with uh, the Board of Trustees of the Expo Center and uh, Global Spectrum, who is doing business as uh, Spectra. Uh, we've had a considerable amount of exchange on this, and I've met with several groups in the community. And just uh, last week, the Chamber of Commerce voted unanimously to support a resolution uh, in, in this same order. What we're seeking is the opportunity to improve the true gem that is the Heart of Oklahoma Expo Center. We have an item that is supported by uh, passionate, well-committed, and exceedingly sincere volunteers, all of whom spend considerable time and, and uh, match with considerable financing from the community. And yet we have uh, failed to allow our asset to flourish in the manner that it can. I submit that the profitability and efficiency can be massively improved uh, through a uh, consolidation of management with this company. What we're asking for tonight is simply a resolution in support of an effort to enter into negotiation. It's not, it does not uh, warrant uh, an agreement. It, we're simply asking for uh, the leadership board of trustees to enter into negotiation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions of Eric? <coughs> well, I, I can say that we've had considerable discussion with myself also with quite a few of our populace and uh, some who had serious questions about it. I've not let, had anyone who walk away that did not have a good understanding, a plus for the, every item that they had brought up was answered in a way that they were satisfied with. Uh, I had some questions again as to their ownership, whether they felt that they were still part of this. 
uh, especially the rodeo and junior livestock and so on, things that have been built over the years. And uh, it, all the conversations I've had, and my understanding of this, uh, it, with that concern, have been very positive. And I think they'll continue to be when they see that this is merely going to lift everything up uh, and make it even more efficient. But not, there's nothing lost. There's only things that are gained. Any other comments, questions? I had, uh, I uh, notified the city manager about seven or eight concerns that I had, and uh, I'm not to go over each one of those again, Eric, but he uh, was courteous enough to answer those concerns. But I still am very concerned about what the, our budget commitment is going to be as far as the city of, of Shawnee, and like for that to be maintained at a minimum as far as that goes. And then uh, also, the uh, I'm concerned about the, the uh, price of the use for our local people and the price of the meals and the concession. And I would hope that something would be in the agreement to uh, minimize the amount of income or the increase per year uh, that they can, they can have. And uh, again, to just emphasize and reemphasize, and you've agreed to this and addressed this several times, is our local events will be uh, protected and uh, will continue to have those and that's a, my, my main, still my main concerns and when the trust goes into negotiating the agreement or contract uh, hopefully they'll keep these things in, in mind and, and uh, negotiate from that standpoint. I think the way this is taking off we're really saying the concept of this looks extremely good. There's a lot of things to delve out and to look right. at more carefully. That's why we're going through the process of taking it to the board and the county. Uh, we're merely saying, at our point, it looks like it's a really good deal. But if there's other things that we're not aware of that we don't get, they're going to be ironed out. If, there's, if they're not, then we don't have an agreement. Uh, that's correct. Uh, I'd like to point out that we are seeking to engage a discussion with an entity that may become our agent. They would represent our community and the facility. And if, uh, if the uh, Board of Trustees agrees to this negotiation, the company will provide us a feasibility study as well as an examination of our fee scale, our uh, scope of operations, and, and how we can not only decrease the inefficiency, that is to decrease costs, but also how we can uh, increase revenue. On both of those counts, that speaks directly to Commissioner Herod's concern about the costs. And by doing those, we can protect, and, and in fact, the, by contract language, all of the events of which we've spoken, the livestock show, the county fair, international finals, junior rodeo, and there are others that would be considered and captured in the, the contract in their current form. I, I submit that this operation will bring benefit to all those elements by increasing their exposure, bringing more attendance, uh, and decreasing their costs. And speaking directly to the volunteers, this is a critical element because none of these events can be complete even partially, much less successfully without the many dedicated volunteers, some of whom are, are here tonight, and I salute their involvement. But their experience can and will be enhanced. Not only will we bring more efficient mechanisms, but also technologies that will make their responsibilities much, much easier and enhance their, uh, uh, their return on their very considerable contribution. Any other comments or questions for Eric? If the trustees so choose to enter an agreement, will that agreement come back to the city council? The, uh, the authority rests with the board of trustees. Uh, the uh, impact on the community as, as it applies to the city council will be the amount of funding that's negotiated. I suspect that the current level of funding is what will be sought. That would cover personnel costs and uh, insurance and some of the other items. But all those elements are would be on the table for consideration and negotiation. Uh, I personally respond to your question. Uh, yes, I, I think so. Well, I if, if I didn't, I'm, I'm happy to be more specific. Well, uh, I'm agreeing with Commissioner Herod that uh, I'm concerned about the amount of money that the city has been funneling into the Expo Center for the last several years. And uh, I don't want to see that same amount funneled in and then we have a 
fee on top, on top of that. Of that. That item can be negotiated, as is typical in this case. There's a benchmark established for the operational uh, budget for the facility. And when that's established, you know, they've already proposed a management fee, which would be in addition to that benchmark amount. We have made no determination, nor have we had discussion about what the management, uh, what the operational budget would be. I would presume that, that they would examine our current budget, and then in negotiation, we can try to find ways to uh, decrease that cost of the city. I think at most, the, the, you know, a worst case scenario would be the additional cost of the management agreement, but the 20% uh, uh, identified potential savings as, as has been in the proposal. In addition, they believe they can bring as much as an 11% uh, uh, profit in the first year uh, amounts to almost $300,000. Now you add to that the fact that the company is proposing spending $150,000 in its first year in capital improvements. We, uh, we can capture our, uh, our costs of over and above the, manage the operational budget that will be benchmarked in the first year. Uh, additionally, if we can continue that increase in profitability, we will decrease the city's uh, historical contribution by offsetting it with profit. Uh, the, the issue with the, the Expo Center that arose to me in my research was that we had an item that had tremendous potential, but we, for a variety of reasons, have not been able to elevate it to that point. And be that marketing reach or technological implementation or a number of other factors which we've previously discussed, we haven't had the ability, and we don't have the ability local to achieve that with a, a national entity that operates 175 similar venues around the country to include the State Fair of Texas, uh, I think we have the capability to bring our, our tremendous asset up to its full potential. <coughs> Thank you, sir. In your experience, uh, Enid, you said you had something like 86 percent uh, coverage as far as uh, the rental spaces of the Expo and use of the Expo. Yes, uh, last year uh, uh, in our similar venue, uh, we have, it's a little different. We built a convention center in Enid and we refurbished another facility. But there were uh, 913 events last year in Enid. Uh, in the first year, there were 863. By comparison, last year our event center had 129 events that covered 40 weekend days. In addition to the 40 weekend days, there were other weekday events, but there were 129 events by my best count. So this usage does increase the flow of people coming into our city continually. Uh, let's say 86 percent. I mean, you have people visiting Shawnee for one purpose or another to use that facility like 86 percent of the time. That, that's clearly the focus. Uh, the secondary benefit of, of this investment is not only the enrichment of our local communities experience at our event center, but it also increases the flow of personnel and people outside our community, all of whom are going to spend money here. The very core reason why the event center was built in the first place. And, and creating a, a larger flow of, of, of people uh, is not only easily achievable, but I know it's quite feasible. Sometimes we don't consider those things, and they're very much a part of this. Uh, they are indeed, and, and uh, the legacy events that we previously discussed, I, I uh, stopped in at Teeners earlier this week and uh, discovered that they had an 80% increase in sales for the five days surrounding the rodeo. So clearly, we have a secondary benefit that just the profit loss examination <laughs> at the event center uh, doesn't capture. So the, the whole picture of this is a whole community uh, tide that floats all economic boats. Of course, that's a peak for us. We won't have peaks like that all the time. But still, the essence of that in, in a some of micro uh, method, it would be continuous. And 86% uh, is a lot of people, even if it's 10 or 15 or 20 at a time coming into the city. It's a plus for us, whoever gets here, and hopefully to see the rest of the things we're going to have for them, for instance, the new museum, the uh, downtown, and various other things, we can kind of build our reputation as a spot to visit. 
added and to be here. You're absolutely right, uh, Commissioner. And there are other venues in, in our community that we might, as we grow in this contract, be able to include in that management scheme. The they're, they're Ritz Theater being one of those. Yeah, agreed. On Commissioner Salter's question, uh, this will have to come back to the commission at some point, I'm assuming. Is that what you're asking? Yes. At a minimum, the funding line will. You, you current, last year, you contributed $817,000 to the uh, event, uh, Expo Center. The year previous, it was one million two. The year prior to that was 700 and change. Uh, I would submit as your financial steward that we cannot continue that level of contribution without seeing some improvement in the profitability. Uh, and as you'll recall, this was the first priority that was established for me when I became city manager, and that requirement was echoed by the Board of Trustees. In, in addition to uh, the, the fact that that board knows more about their operations and events than we do, it, it was expressed to me from a legal standpoint that uh, it was not completely clear who would execute a contract with Spectre should we enter into it. That's, has that, that been clarified? It has not yet, but I know that that will be an item of discussion. What I, I, would, I would personally propose to the Board of Trustees, and I have made this suggestion previous, is that we would designate an individual, uh, or uh, at most two individuals, to negotiate and then deliver to leadership, be it the Board of Trustees and the City Council, to execute. Now, there's been some speculation about the future validity of the Board of Trustees should we embrace this contract. I think it's premature to make that proclamation, but it, it clearly is going to have an impact on it. Okay. Other questions, comments? Is there a motion? I'd move to approve. Commissioner Gillen, move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Bolt. Is there any further discussion? Read the title. A resolution supporting the consideration of an agreement between the Shawnee Civic and Cultural Development Authority and Global Spectrum LLC, DBA Spectra, for management services of the Shawnee Heart of Oklahoma Exposition Center. Call a question. Motion carries 7-0. Item 7, discussion and consideration of the ordinance establishing regulations <coughs> regarding the position and method of turning and required signals, signals of motor vehicles and also providing for severability, codification, repealer, and declaring an emergency. It had call on police chief and it scratched out and says call on you. So I'm calling on you. How do you inherit this one? He showed up. <laughs> The um, issue that was presented um, was from the police department staff. They wanted to obtain an ordinance that was a little stricter than the one that we have on the books currently dealing with the uh, vehicle terms at intersections. The ordinance that was uh, proposed was an ordinance from the city of Oklahoma City uh, it's a little stricter than the state statute, but during our research, we found that it meets uh, all the statutory requirements and it's been upheld on appeal. And basically, it deals with motor vehicles as they um, come to an intersection, the lanes that you normally think that a vehicle would turn into, instead of if you come to a four-lane intersection and you're in the outside lane, you have a specific lane that you turn into. You can't just cross over and turn into either lane you want to. And this is the ordinance that um, some of the police officers talked to uh, one of the attorneys in our office, and this is the, uh, the version of that. It's going to uh, deal with certain specifics in approaching the intersections on how each vehicle addresses. Any questions of Counselor? While we're on the subject, I have a couple of things to, to comment about. It, it, LED lights are so easy to color. And, and I've had occasion recently where I'm following a pickup and the guy's got his, got his bright light on the back of the pickup and it really is difficult. And 
and secondarily, uh, I've had occasion to have a car that was coming toward me that had their turn signals on red, and it caused me to wonder if it was an emergency vehicle or not. It, and, and at some point, as we consider these things in the future and the interplay with state law, uh, I, I think we need to consider some kind of a restriction of not being able to, number one, have a red light facing out the oh. front of your vehicle, nor a white light right. facing out the back. It doesn't have anything to do with this, yeah. this ordinance. It's just a comment in passing. Any questions of Mike? So this is going to follow state, state guidelines? It, it's or, not exactly like the state ordinance. It's a little stricter than the state ordinance. Uh, but it does follow the state guidelines, yes. In a little way more restrictive. I'm in sorry? What way is it more strict? I'm sorry. What, what, in what way is it more strict? Well, it, uh, with the, uh, it has more language dealing with the lanes you turn into. And, for example, the, um, the back part of the ordinance state law doesn't have the requirement that the signal must be initiated within 100 feet of the turn of the intersection. This one does. And it just helps everyone. But yes, it does follow um, the state ordinance, state statute. Okay. Thank you. And staff and staff recommends staff. approval. Yes. Yeah. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Rutherford. Second by Commissioner Seahorn. Any further discussion? Call. Uh, do we have to read the title. In the words of the City of Shawnee, Oklahoma, providing for the regulation of position and method of turning and turning movements and required signals of motor vehicles within the city limits which shall be added to chapter 19 motor vehicles and traffic of the city code and also providing for the servability codification and repealer and declaring an emergency call a question motion carries seven zero is there a motion to for an emergency clause. So moved. My Commissioner Rutherford, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Bold. Call the question. Emergency clause is adopted 7 0. Item 8 discussion and consideration of an ordinance creating a parks and recreations committee. Come on, sure. Who's going to talk? <laughs> I wasn't aware I was going to speak, but uh, <laughs> uh, this will be short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. uh, this is something we've been asking for since uh, uh, we started uh, kind of moving into a recreation department again. Uh, we feel that the direction of the committee itself will help um, guide us uh, with with public input on to what people would like to see. I think also the committee will also help uh, as we move into uh, finalizing some of the engineering plans for the parks designs that we're going to have also. Will the, will the size and the, and the constitution of the committee be determined at some point or will you come back to us with a recommendation to that or is that something you all will do on your own? Uh, yeah, I think we probably need to, to discuss it a little bit further and and uh, talk about the, the size or the amount of individuals on the committee and who's going to be on the committee actually. So, but On the ordinance here, it, the size of composition is one city commissioner, uh, 10 at large members who shall include not the individuals as either residents of the city, business or property owners within the city or employed within the city. So an appointment at, at large member shall be appointed by the mayor. I apologize. My iPad wouldn't open. Mm -hmm. so, okay. You know. I don't know that it was it or me, but it was one of the two. It says the term at large member shall be three years and the event of the vacancy shall occur during the term of any member. His or her successor shall be appointed by the unexpired term or unexpired portion of the term. Thank you. There are motion I, to approve. I, th I think uh, if I could say something else, uh, I would like to, you know, at least y'all say, yeah, let's do this. I, I still think that maybe we need to discuss a little bit about the makeup of the committee and how many committee members there are. Ten's quite a few. That's a yeah, that's so, what I was thinking when I was uh, reading that. I, I would like to uh, maybe at the next 
meeting maybe bring back a, a finalized version of that. Um, that was really kind of drafted off of probably what we did with the beautification committee. Drafted off of what? The beautification, beautification. committee. Yeah. Would you re so. would you recommend that we defer action on this to the next uh, commission I, meeting? I would think so. Yeah, please. Is there a motion to defer? So uh, moved. Moved by Commissioner Harrod. Your second. Right. So quick. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, my question, uh, the way I'm reading this, you residents of the city business or property owners so we're not limiting the people on the committee as we are still limiting to some of our our, our committee members you, you can own a business in town live outside and still be on this committee I, I don't know I, I from the way my personal written. preference is that if people live or work or shop in in the Shawnee they have an interest and in, and in my feeling is we need to expand just in general terms the city committees uh, to the extent we have to change the charter, then I understand we have to do that. But people who have vested interest in us, uh, as we, we get a lot of housing areas and, and people that are community residents that aren't city of Shawnee residents, and I guess I've got a bigger vision of, uh, of what constitutes an interested party than most. Mm -hmm. I believe that's how the, this is worded, the intent, because of the last one employed within the city business or property owner, so it encompasses all of those. That may right. be some good language to look at moving forward on those committees, Mr. Mayor. If we, if we just change that to up to 10 or however that was worded, I mean, wouldn't that I'd be say the composition was, uh, right here, let's see what it says. Composition committee consists of, the committee will consist of 10. 10. We can say up to 10. No, it doesn't say up to no, 10. No, but I mean, we, we you could, could change that. it to that, yes. Is there Fair a amended. second to defer? Second. second. Or somebody Commissioner did. Rutherford. Just for future reference, uh, my preference is an odd number, less than yeah. three. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call the question to defer. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to be the commissioner on it. One city commissioner. <laughs> Punch your button, Ron. 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 <clears throat> you didn't register. <laughs> Motion carries. Well, seven along so fast, okay. <laughs> Item nine: Discussion and consideration of the ordinance regulating the possession of controlled dangerous substances, and also providing for severability, codification, repealer, and declaring an emergency. I'll give it. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, this one right here, with the recent changes in state law. Controlled dangerous substances uh, was a felony in the past and would go straight to the county courts. And so now that they've made that a misdemeanor, we're asking that we have the ability to cite it within the municipal court and uh, take care of it that way also. So it's basically just requesting that we, we didn't have an ordinance in place because it was a felony. Now that it's a misdemeanor, we're requesting the ordinance uh, with the city. So are there, there any questions, questions of chief? So we're just getting in line with state law then? We are. We are. We, uh, we didn't have places. anything in, in yeah. place because Six, eight of question 780 really lowered that from right. 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 I miss, or my family into a misdemeanor. Right. So in the past, they've all gone to county. This will allow it to stay within the municipality. Correct. Because it is a misdemeanor and the municipal court can handle the misdemeanor. So mm -hmm. any other questions? How uh, critical is timing on implementation? I don't you need an emergency. We would like to have the emergency clause just yeah. so the officers can start implementing it. Is there a motion to approve? To approve. Move. To approve. Second. Moved by Commissioner Harris. Second by Commissioner Gillum. Feed the title. An ordinance of the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma, providing for the creation of the municipal offense of simple possession of controlled dangerous substance in reflection and adoption of the Oklahoma Uniform Controlled Dangerous Substance Act regulations of specified misdemeanor offenses and adding that said municipal offense to chapter 20 offenses and miscellaneous provisions of the city code and also providing for severability, codification, and repealer and declaring an emergency. Are there any questions? Call the question. Motion carries 7 0. Is there a move motion to emergency? Uh, Commissioner Harrod moved to adopt the emergency clause. There a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Bolt. Call the question. Motion carries 7 0. 
Item 10, discussion consideration of the ordinance repealing certain portions of, Ar of Article 8, Chapter 8, providing for severability and declaring an emergency. That, is that what we just did? No, that's no. the next one. Actually, is there the, a motion? The courts have ruled, haven't they, Mike, that, that we, the cities can't. We discussed that last Friday, wasn't it, Eric, that the courts have ruled that the cities don't have authority to make rules like this. Isn't that what it was? There was a broken air case yeah. that uh, has caused some concern for municipal, some municipalities. What, what this is doing is, is striking the provisions that previously were adopted by uh, this, this commission, commission as relates to fees and uh, used until there's some clarity with either the state legislature or with the Supreme Court. I think they said that there'd been 38 bills already pre-introduced in the legislature concerning uh, this particular these items right here. So it's going to really take some discussion yeah. somewhere along the. This item will come back. There's yeah. no doubt. In the next uh, eight months, it'll come back again in more forms. Yeah, in some direct form. <laughs> Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Harris. Second by Commissioner Gillum. <coughs> An ordinance amending Chapter 8 business permits and license by repealing certain portions of Article 8 to the Code of Ordinances of the City of Shawnee, providing for severability and declaring an emergency. Call the question. Motion carries seven zero. Is there a motion? Is there a I motion to adopt emergency. the emergency? Moved by Commissioner Harris to adopt the emergency. Second by Commissioner Bolt. Call the question. Motion carries seven zero. Item eleven: discussion and consideration of the ordinance providing for the closing of public easements situated within portions of Lot Two and Lot Three, Villaggio Edition, Section Number One, Shawnee. Pottawatomie County, Oklahoma, and declaring an emergency. This is a uh, requirement for this uh, particular facility to extend to the south. Uh, the, currently, the water line lies just to the south of the Oklahoma Heart Hospital there at 3306 North Kickapoo, and they are planning on relocating the water line down the southern, down the western edge, and then across the southern border of the lot line. When they originally platted this, they put the water line through the middle of this lot. I, th I think they planned at that time on having two separate structures um, due to this decision now to expand the current structure to the <coughs> south and need to re relocate that water line. In the consent agenda tonight, they had an acceptance of an easement. So we've approved the easement going along the east side and down the south side. They are wanting to go ahead and go through the court process to vacate the easement that goes through the middle of the lot and in that, doing that they've asked us to have the commission close that easement uh, to help them with their court case to go forward for the vacation. Are they covering all the expenses to move in the line? Absolutely. Line? That's yeah. all entirely on them. And y'all are inspecting it? Line maintenance will inspect the water line. The water line plans are, are being, uh, being approved and uh, it will be done and be accepted by the city commission staff yeah. recommends approval staff recommends approval and recommends emergency based upon the fact that they want to take this to court and get this moving as fast as possible other questions is there a motion <coughs> so commissioner Seahorn moved to approve second by commissioner Bolt. In order to the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma, providing for the closing of a public easement situated within portions of Lot 2 and Lot 3, the Loggio Edition, Section 1, Shawnee, Pavlami County, Oklahoma, and declaring an emergency. Call the question. Motion carries 7 0. Is there a motion for the emergency provision? Don't move. Moved Second. by Commissioner Harrod, second by Commissioner Bolt. Call question. Motion carries 7 0. Item 12 monthly sales tax and treasury report. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, sales and use taxes remain strong. This month, we uh, our total collections 
combined to be 2.15 million. So for sales taxes, our collections are up about 2.6 for the year over our projected, and uh, use tax is up about 9% over our projected for the year. Any questions? Good news. Isaiah's good news. Thank you. It's good news. Keep, keep bringing that kind of news. Is there any new business? Members, uh, new business. Commissioner's comments. Start at this end. I don't really have a whole lot to say. I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. I appreciate everybody that comes and and, uh, and talks at the meetings. I, I, I really do uh, value what everybody says, and, and um, you know I appreciate people taking time and showing the interest in their city government. And I think that just um, is a good thing, and I think we all benefit from it. It is wonderful to have a nice group of people like this, and and it be friendly. Not have any serious problems. Everybody seems to be satisfied. It's just almost surreal. But thank you very much. Glad to have you here. I would like to comment that uh, one of the things that uh, when our city manager came aboard was one of the comments or one of the things that he and I talked about was the some of the water department problems and also the water meters and the expo center. And uh, so I have uh, done research on both sides of it, and I've spent a lot of time talking with uh, Mr. Benson about this project and, uh, and uh, concerned about some of it, as some of you are. But uh, I think that we need to do something to move forward, and uh, hopefully this will be come out for the best for everybody concerned. And I'll be just personally uh, watching the contract and negotiations and I hope I'm not involved in it, but anyhow, yeah, I uh, don't want to volunteer for that. Don't misunderstand that. But uh, I will be, will be examining the contract and uh, make sure that everything that, uh, that I'm concerned about is covered. So I do appreciate uh, all the calls and comments and everything about it, and I appreciate uh, uh, Mr. Benson's work on it and all his leg work and talking to the volunteers and, and the uh, different board members. Thank you very much. Quiet tonight. <laughs> I'm saying, go ahead and uh, Well, I guess I would just say that it's kind of good to get back into the groove of meetings. We haven't met in about a month, <laughs> and uh, I appreciate the phone calls that I have gotten on two or three of the items that we've discussed tonight, and I think we're going the right direction. Thank you, Ben. Uh, my comments generally deal with with uh, as Commissioner Hare, the Expo Center and the, and the water rate increases. Shawnee's a hundred year old city and we have enormous capital requirements that are coming down the pike at us. In terms of expansion, we have we're over $30,000, $30,000 in terms of population and uh, we still have a lot of old lines around the city and old streets and uh, it's necessary for us to keep up and provide for uh, growth and for uh, to pay for the deferred maintenance that we got and the, and the expo fits right in there we've got an awful lot of deferred maintenance out there and if we are to be able to take care of those items of deferred maintenance then we're going to have to do a better job uh, from our standpoint of matching the revenues and the costs and those kinds of things so uh, I know it steps on toes Sometimes when we do these things, including the, the water rate increases, the uh, fact of the matter is we can't keep up if we don't do it. So uh, my comments would, would just be to bear with us, and, and I think you'll see positive results as we move down the road. Now, that having said, we are adjourned to the Shawnee Airport. Call order. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Made by Commissioner Herod. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Bolt. Call the question. Motion carries 7 0. Is there any new business on the airport unit? No new business. One comment. Yes. I'm happy to see all the concrete work out there and, uh, to, and see them with a uh, new hangar and so forth going in. It really looks great.
Okay. We are adjourned to the Shawnee Municipal Court. Would, enter in, would uh, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Be moved by Commissioner Gillum. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Bolt. <coughs> Call the question. Motion carries 7 0. Is there any new business on the Shawnee Municipal Authority? No, sir. No new business. We are. Uh, uh, one comment about the engineering firm that they're hiring to do the consulting work. Isn't that the same one that we've been using and have, that we took the comment from before? On our water meters and so forth. Yes, yes. yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Sure I was thinking of it. I was on a different channel there for a second. Yes, this is the, the company that we've consulted with. Them. It will initiate the uh, automatic meter reading uh, installation. That's what I thought. Thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you.